Hey Vintage Kids, how are you guys? I'm Mr. Alex from the 5 p.m. service. I really miss you guys and hope everyone is doing well. Today we're going to continue looking at what happened to a man named Job a long time ago. We're going to see how he had it very rough but kept his hope in God. So last time I was with you guys, we talked about this word hope a lot. We talked about how sometimes we use it like the word wish. Like when we say, I hope I win this baseball game or I hope we have cookies for dessert. We really mean, I wish I won this game, or I wish I have cookies. But the Bible talks about hope differently, right? Do you guys remember the def definition we used last time? It's kind of long, but what we said is that hope is the biblical expectation of what God has promised. So we hope for something that we know, not think, not guess, or wish, but know will happen because God promised it. So this kind of ties into our memory verse, which is Hebrews 10, verse 23. Have you guys been practicing, practicing memorizing this verse? It's okay if you haven't, because we can do it together now. So here's what Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 says. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. All right, one more time. Remember, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. So do you guys remember what happened to Job? He lost all his animals, his servants, and even his sons and daughters. A few weeks ago, we learned about how Satan thought that Job was only righteous and was only good and did a bunch of good things because God made things easy for him. Satan said that if Job lost everything, that Job would become a much different person who wouldn't love God. So did Job hope in God just because he had an easy life? Or did he place his hope in God because of who God is? Those are our questions. But this also reminds me of our catechism question. What is our only hope in life and death? Once again, what is our only hope in life and death? The answer to this catechism question is that we are not our own, but we belong to God. So as we continue to learn about Job, we're going to see if this is really true. Is our life ours or is it God's? What does this mean? So today we're going to look at Job chapter 2 verse 11 to 13. Yeah, today's passage is kind of short. It's just two verses. So I'm going to read it out loud, but if you want some time to find your Bible, you can pause your video now. All right, got it? Good. So here is Job, the book of Job, chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. Job had three friends, and when they heard about all the troubles that came upon him, they left their homes and went to comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. So what did his friends do? What did Job's friends do for him? They did a couple of things. They went to comfort him. They cried with him. They sat with him. Did they talk to him? No, the Bible says that they just sat with him for seven days without speaking because they could see how much pain he was in. They knew, they were good friends, so they knew that he didn't need words at that moment. What he just needed was someone, a friend, to be with him. So when you guys are sad, do you ever just want to be with someone that you know loves you and cares for you? Maybe it's a parent, a brother, or sister, your best friend. Maybe it's just a pet, like a dog, cat, or maybe even a gerbil. Just someone. And whoever it may be, sometimes you don't really need them to fix anything or to have all the answers for you. You just kind of need them to be a friend who's there and that gives you a safe space and just gives you company. Friendship isn't always fixing everything. Sometimes it's just a space to let your friend be sad and feel what they are feeling. So do you guys know why it's important to have friends and a community that can be a safe space for you? You need someone who you can trust who will be there for you when you need them most. So how do you think Job felt when he was at his lowest point, when he had lost everything, was in so much pain and suffering, he was at his lowest point, and his friends came to give him space to feel the pain he was in? 
They didn't make his problems go away. He didn't get everything back because they were there. But at least he knew he had someone. He had a friend who would be there with him through that pain and that suffering. So since we can't really get into groups for our discussion question today, I want you guys to do this next part with your family or with a friend. So our question or discussion question is, think about a time when you were a good friend to someone else. So I'm just gonna think about a time when you were a good friend to someone else. Now careful, we don't wanna brag here. We wanna remember that God put us in the right place at the right time to be a good friend to someone. So he gets all the glory for having it all perfectly planned out. But when was the time when you were in the right place by God's grace to help someone in, by being a good friend? What did it look like? Did you create space for someone to be sad or upset? Did you give them advice? Talk about a time when you were a good friend. So for an example, for me, one time, one of my former roommates had a really bad breakup with his girlfriend. It was awful. He came home late that night and he was just devastated. He really didn't want to talk about it, but he also didn't want to be alone. And it was very late and we really needed to sleep. And so what we did is we got a mattress, we pulled his mattress into my room, put it on an open space so he could sleep there. I didn't say anything. I just gave him a place where he could be with someone. The good thing is this story has a happy ending because a few weeks later he worked things out with his girlfriend and they actually got married. They've been married for a year now. Can you believe that? That was all by God's grace. So we can have hope that God can and will do things in our lives even when things may look really bad. I hope the story is encouraging to all of you this week. So I want you guys to share some stories of how God has been good so you can remember to always have your hope in him. So until next time, Vintage Kids, I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye. Hey, Vintage Kids, it's me.